I went out on the porch and I could see the real world, but I was certain that was an illusion. And that if I stepped off the porch, I would just fall right through. Then I saw, I saw like the sun turn into the moon and like the whole landscape change and turn back. And that just kept going until at one point, just I totally snapped and it was like, you ever had a dream where you're doing something where you're not in control? It's like, you're just watching yourself do something. Yes. It came like that. And wow, I was your crying. actual life. Yeah. Like my waking life was like that. Crazy. It was like, I thought I was at that point where the world had been unmade and I had to find my way through to the new world. And so I felt like I was in deep space for days. And at one point when I just totally lost control, I went around the house and it was like, I would go into a room and lock the door. So I'd lock myself into a room. Then I'd break the window, climb out the window, go around the house to another window, break it, climb inside. I'd be locking doors and then running through them to get out of the room or to get back into it. And I smashed out all the lights in the house. I, totally. like, I have no idea why I was doing that. It was just, I was throwing my shit out the windows. Uh, wow. Around, like just completely not in control. And, um, Eventually, I'm running around outside naked, mm -hmm. and I'm covered in blood, and it was just from a small cut in my hand, like in the window. I've never intentionally hurt myself. I've never mm -hmm. like, tried to. But anyway, I'm running around outside naked, covered in blood, and <laughs> this cop car pulls in. And it just so happened, cop, like I was on the edge of the highway out in mm -hmm. the country that cops were going by and pulled in. And mm -hmm. when they pulled in, I was like, okay, here's the moment that I break through. And I was certain that the devil had sent them to kill me. And so when they get out of the car, um, I start screaming that I know the devil sent them to kill me. <laughs> and I'm just being like, and I had like, there, for me, there was no fight. In it. it was like, I was ready to martyr myself. You know what I mean? It was oh, just geez. like, to me, the victory was to go ahead and kill me. You get what I mean? Yeah, because I'm, I'm taking the higher ground. Yeah. Yeah. And so these cops were so fucking freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, like, one guy's got the hand on his gun and like <laughs> crippled around his side. The other guy's going like, hey, hey, calm down. And he's like, he gets me to lie. And I'm, and I'm screaming like, yeah, and I'm screaming like, go ahead, go ahead and fucking kill me. I'm not going to beg for my life. <laughs> these uh. cops were all fucking freaked out they're like get out on the ground and so i got down on the ground and he goes like behind me to like cuff me uh -huh. as soon as he grabbed one of my arms i just like sort of spasmed or something i didn't try to fight back <laughs> whatever i did he freaked out and, he jumped back. and so i jumped up started yelling some crazy shit and he just pulled out his pepper spray and uh. started like into my face. All for running around naked in your own yard. Well, and I was screaming that I knew the <laughs> devil sent them. And I was telling them to kill me. And all right, I had blood smeared all over. Like... But the pepper spray didn't affect me. I was so fucking out of it. Oh. Spraying me in the face with it. And it, like, it wasn't stopping me. I was just still standing there yelling. And so... <laughs> Okay. They finally did manage to cuff me. They cuffed me like ankles and wrists. Uh huh. Um, dragged me into the back of the cop car. I'm sitting in there and they go in to check out the house, you know, to make sure no one else is in there, whatever. And while they're in the house, I kicked out the back window of the cop car. <laughs> like, all fucking chained wrists and ankles. And when they come out, I'm like trying to squirm out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and they just pushed me back in and That's went to funny. take me to the mental hospital. But I was like, where I was living, uh, they had to drive through Gatineau Park. It was like the way to the hospital. But so it was like, they took me, turned off the highway and started driving into the middle of nowhere. And uh -huh. I'm like all chained up in the back of the cop car. And then I started fucking hallucinating uh, 
you know that little screen in between the cops like they've got their little computer yeah yeah i started hallucinating that this f government file on me was flashing like they had photos of my dad and my mom and like photos of me and all this information oh. and so then like the delusion flipped from the devil sent them to kill me to oh okay the new world order is nabbing me and i'm expecting uh -huh. at any moment almost like in the batman movies when you're it seems like it's nothing and then something opens up and there's your secret entrance you know yeah like, i'm expecting suddenly trees to be like oh to turn off into some ramp to take me into some government base and you again though the delusion was that because i was important involved in the end of the world and they're yeah, yeah. trying to steal my power or whatever you're very creative extremely creative that's so oh, creative that's amazing so, so elaborate oh it's amazing yeah and then i remember at one point once i got caught like sort of my heart rate and stuff went down a bit i noticed i'm like why is my back burning and i'm noticing all of a sudden that it feels like my skin's on fire all over the place and it really confused me at first mm. and i was like oh right they pepper sprayed ah, it, it was so you're just feeling it it was a good 20 minutes sit, like after they pepper sprayed me that I started feeling it at all. And these are all non-drug induced states. Yeah. Yeah. These are just natural states of your consciousness. Yeah. And uh, like I, I was smoking pot at the time, but I right. smoked pot on a regular basis. Right. Um, yeah. That wouldn't do that. And yeah, no, it's, uh, I find, Mania, in many ways, is very symptom to sh magic mushrooms. There's elements of magic mushrooms that, yeah, a crazy mind can just do all on its own. So you think that for some reason you have more access to those psilocybin receptors in your, in your brain? Or just that there's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, uh -huh. And again, it can come down to like, which way you want to look at it. If we're going to talk about more like the biochemistry and the neuroscience of it, do you get what I mean? Maybe hallucinogenic mushrooms activate certain similar things. Sure, or sure. Then there's like, you know, there's the crazy ideas about hallucinogenic mushrooms being a form of life actually trying to communicate with us. You know what sure, I mean? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like the idea that ayahuasca, I've never done that, but I've heard people talk about the entities that you can meet on ayahuasca. Yeah. From the metaphysical, if someone's interested in that, perhaps yeah. like if there is that other whole layer to reality or layers. Right, and perhaps they're all connected. Maybe there's multiple ways to connect to it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. One being shrooms or other hallucinogenics, one being intentional meditation techniques, and uh -huh. one being insanity. And, and just so everyone knows, what was your, you know, and again, forgive me, because I really don't agree with these terms, clinical diagnosis? My clinical diagnosis would be bipolar type 1. Okay, got it. Got it. With psychosis. And for bipolar type 1, I'm strong um strong yeah like i'm strongly bipolar oh i see what i mean like uh we don't do it here but i think in europe there's like a one to ten scale for like severity for mental illnesses yeah uh, like of, i've talked to lots of other people with bipolar type one not as extreme as me at all at all um, okay so I'm you've got a very strong set of a really strong and in fact i've never talked to anyone else who had a three-year cycle ever oh um, really yeah that's like extremely long like yeah. lots of people with um bipolar can have like really short cycles where in a month right. they go up and down um but for me yeah it was like my psychosis would build and build and during the at the beginning my psychosis or mania leading to psychosis only ever broke by being institutionalized 
the right. first time. So I don't know how long it could have gone on before it would have crashed on its own. Right. But then once I came out of it, the depression phase was two years, both those times. Like wow. two years of solid depression where at the end of the last six months, it starts sort of gradually lessening. Yeah. But definitely a solid 18 months of like, when you wake up, you're like, oh, for fuck's sakes, I'm still fucking alive. Every moment being awake is just like horrid, where it's like you have to actively try to keep yourself from going and killing yourself. It's like mm. you just so badly want to do that. And where every night going to sleep, you're just praying not to wake up. Yeah, so you've got those gigantic ups and downs that you're dealing with. Yeah. yeah. And huge. What, like once I accepted it and started learning how to manage it. And so yeah. like, first of all, um, so for anyone else who's got this or knows someone who's got it, when the mania starts, one of the things about bipolar mania is you start to feel like you don't need to eat and you don't need to sleep. And you'll notice you need less and less food. You need less and less sleep. Um, but also it will tell you that that's like not a problem, that that's like you're healthier, you feel better, you're, and you begin to feel like magic, like, oh, everyone else is an idiot. They think they need to eat. I don't. They think they need to sleep. I don't. Just don't fall into that thinking you don't need to eat. So I have a minimum amount of food I have to eat every day, whether I want to or not. You just make yourself do it force myself yeah Deep. and how how did you get to yourself to that point because because that takes a lot of groundedness and and under, like it's it's this concept of i know a part of me is not going to eat like i know a part of me so that that's already implying that you have multiple parts of you so there's clearly a part of you who came online and now is starting to be or, or has been for a while managing these parts of you that that don't eat or going to these states the awareness of what it would lead to okay first was what allowed me to force myself to eat so, so you, you played it through um it was just because my first time like after coming out of the second depression when i was like living alone um at that point that was when I accepted that I was mad and was just going to try to deal with that. So after coming out of my first depression, the goal was to go back to normal. Okay. After the second one, the goal was to deal with this. To accept so what, what, what I, you were dealing with. Yeah. So my second mania, I allowed myself to be fooled by the mania because I was trying to deny it. And if the something's second. not there, then you don't pay attention to its influence. Does that make, make sense? Like, let me, say, let, me, let me make sure I understand that. If something's not there, if you're telling yourself that something's not there, then you, you're not going to pay as much attention to it. Is that, that's what you said? You're not going to yeah, notice. I find you'll, deny that it that it's even there so okay yeah when i didn't want when it wasn't okay to go crazy then when you start going a little crazy you go like no 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 i'm fine no 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 i'm fine and you ignore that as it's getting stronger when i, see. I, when I finally accepted that i was crazy then as soon as I was coming out of the depression and got to that sort of level spot, although I don't, it's not a normal level. Like I'm never normal the way I used to. Be. Even um, today? Yeah. Yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah. Like so, even when I'm at my most grounded, it's nothing like the old me. 